uh, and traveling to Pretoria back and forth. We have been there once. I have indicated earlier to my Lord in Chambers. Sure, this walnut look. Is all of this true? Drive covered from only 745 Rand per month and we'll reduce your excess every month. Consulting with my client, we believe it's in his best interest if, uh, for him to procure legal representation from uh, Victoria, where s such legal representatives will have uh, more, or rather, your, my Lord, it would be easier for them to have access to him. Uh, regular basis compared to us in Bloemfontein traveling to Pretoria. For those reasons, Your Worship, I withdraw as attorney of record. If there's anything else my Lord would like me to address on. Yes, Mr. Sirat, what I want to know at this stage is uh, did he engage us in this? in Gauteng or not? Uh, my Lord, I believe not at this juncture. He would require some time to engage. Uh, Pastor. Yes, does not have sufficient financial instructions and also the inconvenience of traveling from Bloemfontein to Pretoria to consult with you. Apparently, you have indicated, Mr. Bester, please stop the theater theatrics. Uh, he informs me that he has discussed the problem with you and that you might want to procure the legal representative a legal representative in Gauteng. Is that correct? It's uh, incorrect, um, first of all. And the reason why I'm raising my hands, Your Honor, is because I can't move my hands. They are cuffed. And I'm asking them to uncuff one hand. That's why I was raising my hand. Sure. Yes? Um, Your Honor, um, the, the legal representation that was brought before this court previously the challenge was that they were not appointed by me, and they, I didn't sign any mandate. They were appointed outside of mandate, and it was clarified by my coordinating attorney that um, they would have to withdraw from this appearance. Um, we, obviously, we had tried to consult with them. Um, the challenge is that they had booked about three days to consult with me at uh, CMAX, but unfortunately, they were not able to be given a chance to consult. So um, it's a challenge that I also want to address this court, if the court may allow me yes. to address this issue. But basically, at CMAX, I'm not able to consult with um, my legal representation as I wish, and even the, the client and um, attorney privilege um, of confidentiality is a challenge. Because first of all, Your Honor, the matter that I am facing here in this court, it has to do with the Correctional Service Act, and indirectly, Correctional services are part of the complainant, as one should call that, because they are um, charging me with escape. I feel that my confidentiality of consultation has been compromised because they have a direct interest. I, I cannot uh, be able to divulge certain information to the alleged escape because I do not believe that it's an escape, but whatever the facts are, I can't freely consult with any attorney that comes to CMAX because of the restriction that the National Commission has instructed upon um, the, 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 the wardens that work there. And the system that has been set up for me specifically, it is as if um, I have my own sort of separate rules con okay. concerning to other inmates, you understand? Are you therefore saying that you cannot consult with your legal representative in the absence of employees of the Department of Correctional Services? 
No, I'm saying, Your Honor, that in consulting with, with, with any representation, yes. um, I'm having a challenge in being able to have a client-based consultation of confidentiality. But what does that mean? It means that we'll, our consultation is done through a telephonic uh, phone. Oh. And that phone apparently is recording every conversation that we have. And through that, it's previously and, 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 and through other people proven that it's been used as a mechanism to be able to access information from consultations. So for me, I feel that in this current situation where there are um, people involved in, from the head office of correctional services in this actual matter, for me to be able to present my case and be able to instruct an attorney thoroughly, I need to be provided an opportunity where I can do that freely. And I'm not able to do that freely. Um, regardless of what the, the instructions are on, on this current uh, representation, the, the, it was clear that I was going to withdraw them. Um, I am in, 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 in trying to finalize a, 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 um, a new team, but in, in that also we are still going to deal with the same challenges. Yes. May, may I suggest the following? Engage the services of a legal representative, and you may want to consider instructing them to bring a formal application uh, to a court, a competent court, to deal with your application to consult uh, in a manner that would uh, respect and protect the privilege of uh, the attorney or legal representative and client. Your Honor, may I speak? Yes. Um, because Honor, I do not have the facts uh, the, and the full circumstances of the situation yet. I, I understand, Your Honor, but yes. my, my concern is, is also that, Your Honor, under, uh, under the uh, Bill of Rights, which is the fundamental right to, of the Constitution, is that um, Section 25, uh, bracket 3, is that everyone is entitled to a fair trial. So I mean, believe that if I'm going to have to, if, if, if I'm gonna have to spend um, a separate approach to, to go to a motion court to file an application stating that I'm having challenges to be able to be thoroughly defended in this court, I feel that I should bring this matter to this court. Yes, Mr. Bester. You, you may bring it to this court if uh, you are so advised. But currently, as things stand, you do not have a legal representative. If your legal representative that you engage in future experiences the impediments that you refer to, then and only then can they bring uh, the application. Do you understand? I understand. Thank you. I will not deal with the matter on a premature basis because the complaint that you uh, are currently bringing to me uh, is not existent, non existent yet until you get a legal representative. And that re legal representative may then engage the authorities at the Department of Correctional Services, and should they not find any joy, they can then approach any competent court, including this court. So, when will you be able to speak to your new legal team? Um, they will be available in the next seven days. Or who is it, if I may ask? Um, it's Advocate Lerato, and uh, the, the, the instructing attorney will be um, Attorney Denana. issues raised by Mr. Mururi, and I don't know if my Lord will also allow me to address you in respect of our readiness. Well, at this stage, uh, it, it looks like the matter will not proceed. Uh, I have not seen any Section 212B reply uh, by your client, Mr. Lamini. The only ones that I have is from accused numbers three, five, six, nine. And I was informed in chambers 
that uh, accused number eight uh, has, uh, he's ready, and it will be handed up in court. My Lord, we actually filed and, and, and served the state with our 212Bs. In I'm respect sure. of accused number one? In respect of number one. Well, then it's not in the court file, Mr. Pembani. <coughs> Saying nine simple words before bed can help attract money while you sleep. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Yes, but it's not in the court file. I think in, in the interest of time, uh, you and, between you, Mr. Mutlung, and Mr. Lamini, yes. you can sort it out and ensure that it is in the court file. Yes, thank you. Because the matter is any case going Since to be I, postponed. Yes, yes, ma'am. I thought you were referring uh, uh, to those that I was serving this morning. Okay. I was checking. Thank you. Ms. Clear, in respect of accused number two. I was filed on the 9th of February. I will ensure that the uh, 212B reply is also filed in the court file. Uh, with regards to the postponement, my lord, at this stage, it's rather more important to sort out all the preliminary issues so that we can ensure that when the trial date is set, we are ready to proceed with trial. So, in principle, we don't have, <coughs> sorry, my lord, we don't have an objection against the postponement Thank at you. this stage, as it is. Thank you, Mr. Diva. Thank you, my lord. Um, uh, we do not have an objection to the request that has been made to have the matter postponed to address those issues that are still need to be addressed. I can also confirm that we already filed our 2 and 2B replies in yeah. February already, my lord. Okay. As a competition. Mr. I think you, you indicated that uh, Mr. Mutlou, Mr. Maruri. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> have any objection to the withdrawal of um, Mr. Sidat, uh, as well as the request by accused number seven uh, for the matter to be postponed. Uh, my Lord, you would recall that in chambers I did confirm that uh, section 212 reply is ready to be filed or, or served and filed, and I've, I did converse this with my learned colleague for the state. As a court, please. Thank you. Uh, has a date been arranged? Um, the date has not been arranged, um, in the light of the fact that uh, we, we actually wanted to hear the situation of accused number um, seven. I think uh, Mr. Moruri has already indicated that uh, he will be placed um, on financial instructions in six weeks' time. Yes. It, is, it will therefore be my request that the date be arranged around that time. Mr. Maruri, I think it's back to you now. Uh, will you know within six weeks and uh, do you need a postponement for a period of six weeks or more? What is the situation? My Lord, I, I should know within six weeks, so a, a, a postponement for, say, seven weeks should, should suffice, my Lord. Mr. Pembani, do you have a date in mind? Let's just see. Uh, uh, my, my clerk just indicates that the 24th of July is an open date. It will be a Wednesday, my lord. Yes. Yes. It will, it will suit the state. Any of the legal representatives have a problem with the, the date, 24th of July? My lord, I have another matter, but it's in the high court here. So I oh, think yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Fine. And Mr. Mutlohum is in any case involved in this case as well, yes. as you're instructing a tenure. Indeed, my lord. Yeah. As a court pleases. Thank you. 
My Lord, with your permission, may I raise just one issue? Oh, yes. My Lord, I, I, I have perused the indictment and I am convinced that it looks incomplete in regard to about two counts, which perhaps it needs to be mentioned here, so that the state can be aware of it and, and try to work on that before our next appearance. Yes. My Lord, I will refer you to page seven of the indictment. It listed up to count number 34. But if my Lord goes to page number 28, where the charges are actually being framed and they, they go up to count number 32. There is no count number 33 and there is no count number 34. So I, I, I pick it up as and when we were, we were consulting, so, but I, I think it's a matter which the state can be able to work on so that next time when we appear, we know what is the position with regard to whether there is count 33 and 34 or if there is no such. Yes, thank you, Mr. Thank you, my lord. Mr. Mpembani? Thank you, my lord. Um, uh, may, I I, must, uh, may I suggest to you that uh, you sort out this problem as soon as possible, but not later than uh, seven days from now? Yes, uh, yes. Because otherwise we will get back here on the 24th of July and there might just be a, another request for a postponement because uh, council or the legal representatives uh, have not consulted on counts uh, numbers 33 and 34. Should you uh, proceed with uh, counts 33 and 34 or add counts 33 and 34? I take note of it and it will be added. And will you then communicate with all the legal representatives in, in, in the matter and also uh, then find out from accused number seven who is who his legal representative will be so that when they consult with him they know exactly whether counts number 32 and 33 still exist. Yes, it is the court. All right. My Lord, um, if I can just make a request uh, that um, all the legal representatives to confirm if they are in possession of the contents of the docket as they are, because according to Advocate Vesta, um, there was a second bunch of documentations that were supposed to have been collected from the office. I did discuss it with my learned friends, and I am aware that, um, for instance, uh, Mr. Mutung um, is in possession of the documents. If we can just have it on record that all of them are uh, in possession of the said document, uh, second bunch of documentation. All right. Uh, apparently, there are two sets of documents. Uh, everybody is in possession of the first set. Uh, what Mr. Pemvani wants to know is whether all the legal representatives are in possession of the second set. Is that correct? That's correct. Who, or let me, let me rather pose it in the negative. Who is not in possession of the second set? Nobody. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pemvani, it looks like everybody has it. <laughs> okay. Noted. Thank you, my Good. All right. Uh, yes, Mr. Pester, I see you raising your hand. Um, Your Honor, I, I would like to raise, um, I feel that it's, it's, it, it, is in my, it is in my right, Your Honor, to request the court to address the court um, humbly so, Your Honor. I, I do have a bit of a challenge on the, the, the facts that you have brought to me related to my, to my defense, um, because I do feel that it, 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 it ought to be the same challenge again. And I think... I understand what the court is saying in a sense of me approaching a formal application before the court. If need be. Yes. yes, yes. yes. But uh, I do request the court to humbly give me an opportunity to give these, because that's not the only challenge. I'd like to give the court the actual challenges so that the court can understand where I'm coming from in raising this point. Please. May I proceed? You may proceed. Your Honor, um, I'm having a challenge in basically being able to consult, but not only consult, but access to legal documentation from my incarceration currently. Just, a, just a minute. Yes. When you say legal documentation, what does that mean? That means that the Criminal, uh, Correctional Service Act, triple one of 1998, which I am charged under, I have requested it from the National Commissioner, the Area Commissioner, and it's been refused 
that I'm being told that I cannot access that document. And that document is actually the document that I'm charged with. Um, I don't know why I'm not allowed to access the document. I've not been given, given any explanation on that. It took me four months to be able to access the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. So what I'm trying to explain to the court is that there are fundamental issues that are pertaining to me as, 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 as an accused that I believe that any legal representation that's going to represent me is going to deal with the same issues and it's going to end up in a point where I'm going to withdraw. This is my third withdrawal of an attorney and I feel that all of them have had the same challenges. The challenges are that I'm not able to have either access to the documents they want to give me and the documents are sitting with, because um, at the current situation is that the National Commission has placed me under him directly meaning that there's nothing that can be processed or given to me without his access or without his direct approval. And in that, it means that whatever document my legal team may present, be it a motion or be it whatever application or any legal documentation, it has to be given to him. And I feel that that is unfair, Your Honor. And also, legal representations are withdrawing from the case based on the fact on how they are treated when they are actually consulting or how they are treated when they are coming to consult with me. And I feel that, Your Honor, if you are saying to me that I need to appoint another attorney and he should or they should come here and present a case of my treatment when I am the one who's been treated in that manner, I feel it, it wouldn't be correct, Your Honor, because I am the one that's treated in that manner. I'm the one experiencing that. And to, 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 to allow me to just point, because I'd, I'd like to proceed if I may. The National Commissioner, Your Honor, is, it has been in charge or has taken the, the obligation of being in charge of me as an inmate, and in that meaning that all my responsibilities or any activities that involves Tabo Besta has a Tabo Besta Act, according to Correctional Services, the way I feel I'm treated. It might not be correct, but that's how I am treated. I'm segregated from everyone for the past 15 months. I have not had access or contact with any human except the EST that sits outside my door, and that's the only people I see. And I feel for my mental health and other issues, it is unfair and is not presenting me in the best ability to be in this court. I also believe that the so-called political swing behind this weight that's tried to deprive me of any right to be able to have a fair, a fair defense in this matter is, 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 is crucial. Your Honor, I, I, I shy away not from the fact that in the docket there's a statement that has been produced by the investigating officer who actually apparently has committed suicide, that says that I have said that the former president is the one who orchestrated this escape. And if you read the, the, the indictment, it has the former pre presidential uh, protection unit as, 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 as a witness, and also the, the matter of case that I've, involved, that I've opened, the investigating officer in that matter, is also a witness in this case. So meaning that, Your Honor, I am sitting in a situation where I, as, 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 as a person, feel that I, I have no system or any place where else to bring my grievances than this court and myself. Because if I have to bring it before the prison, there is no, there's no one available to assist me. The National Commissioner has on public platform said he will address and have a meeting with me. This was two months when I got back into this country. And to, to this date, I have never seen that person. I've only heard of reports. To continue with this issue is that, Your Honor, I believe that even my, my, my presence in this court, I am not brought in this court freely where I can express myself. If you can look at me, Your Honor, in the way that I am cuffed, I am cuffed in a way, Your Honor, that is up unhuman for a person that's coming to defend and fight for his own life. Be it, be it, or be it not, the, 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 the Bill of Rights states very clearly that all are to presume, be presumed innocent and the court, has, the, the state has to prove beyond reasonable doubt that I am guilty. I believe that with the carnage of the media and everyone else that I am not treated fairly or equal in any sense. And I feel that if that is the responsibility or the manner that I will be treated in, I feel that it's unfair, Your Honor, to, to a fair trial as, as a person that has an obligation to speak for himself because there's no one else that's going to do that for me. And I feel that I, I, I want to bring these issues to this court so that the court is aware that, first of all, the charge that I am facing involves the actual office that I am under. The correctional services, in whatever story the media may, that, uh, that's out here, or even an indictment, is incomplete, Your Honor, without me. And I feel that I am treated this way to be 
threatened from me being able to express myself or present whatever evidence I can present to show that the so-called alleged whatever charges are incorrect. But in that manner, if this court cannot be able to hear me out or the court cannot understand from my point of view, because first, Your Honor, I'm a layman in law, but I do understand that I do have the right to speak. So I would like to address the court on the basis of the, the charges involve so many high-profile uh, people that the Minister and the National Commission of Correctional Services have deprived me from every single privilege that exists. I am under Section 29 of the apartheid government. That is how I am treated at this current moment in this constitution, in this free country. I am treated with two hours of family visits for 30 minutes. I am given one consultation or two if I am lucky. And in that process, I am kept in a hole by myself with no one on site. They have removed the EST man, uh, uh, people that were outside my door now. I feel that my life is in danger because of the fact that the people that are responsible for this charge, I am under their hands. How can I then be free, be able to defend myself, Your Honor, if the court is not able to hear, give me an ear to, in whatever issues I may be? The way that I am dressed is an issue. I have been forced to dress as such. I am not dressed. These clothes were bought for a purpose to come to court. I had to spend money to look like this. I have clothes in, 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 in my bags that have whatever branding. I am not allowed to wear clothes that cost a certain amount. I was told that I, can, I, I can't wear clothes that are Louis Vuitton or whatever because it gives the wrong impression. So I am now being forced to follow laws based on an impression, Your Honor. And this is not just one thing. It's several matters and several issues that lead to one person. And this is one person out of 300,000 inmates in South Africa. I feel that it's unfair. You understand, Your Honor? And I feel that I, I'm out to speak because I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna appoint another legal team and they're gonna withdraw again. And I'm gonna come back and say, Your Honor, but I have the same problem. I don't have a copy of the docket. I don't know what, what, what the docket is. And I feel that the, 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 the MPA are to give me the docket directly because if this is the manner that I'm going to have, I might have to defend myself as a lame person in court and hope and pray that whatever facts I'll present, because I have requested to the, to the head of, of prison that if I can please have access to a consultation of experts, which means I would like to have a, a PI or a forensic experts to verify if those facts in docket are actually true, because I differ from the version they have. And for me to be able to do that, I need to be allowed for them to come to the prison. But I'm not. I have two months left in the time period that I have to serve in CMAX. But I know for a fact that I will not be treated fairly and be released as anyone else. Because there's a time period that you serve in a prison like that. There is no human rights in that prison. Jicks wrote a report by Judge Cameron that he has submitted in Parliament and gave to a portfolio committee that correctional services, CMAX and COXTA are unconstitutional. They are violating every single right that the fundamental structure of this court exists on. And I believe that if I don't speak for myself, who's going to do that for me? <clears throat> because I'm going to come here and get a remind after a remind, and it's going to be as I want to delay this matter. I am nearly done with my sentence, Your Honor. I want to finish with this matter. And I really want the court to understand. My last point, Your Honor, that I want to state is, is the issue of equality, Your Honor. I don't feel that I'm equally treated as any other accused person in this country. First of all, Your Honor, you have the media that has tarnished and destroyed me on no facts, no evidence has been brought in any side. It's already confirmed that I have escaped. But no one knows the true facts. It is already confirmed that Tabo Besta is a rapist and a murderer. But there's no evidence. I am self-convicted. I pleaded guilty to the most crucial most crucial or most dangerous um, unit, which is called the Katomena Killer Squad, forced me to plead guilty. And that case has been pending for 13 years in these courts. Transcripts have been missing for 13 years. And it goes around in South Africa as there is a proven fact, beyond reasonable doubt, that Tabo Besta is a murderer and a rapist. I've been out for a year. There's no one charge. Leonard Chaube, which I can refer to, I am not the worst inmate in this country. I don't have the highest counts. I have three counts. But I am the most popular inmate in this country for no reason, because of the political carnage and because of the political issues that I have in my personal capacity that have nothing to do with this legal proceedings. 
And I feel that I am to address that. And Your Honor, with my last point, that I feel it's unfair for these people that are sitting here as my so-called accused to be in court when I know very well they have nothing to do with this. When I know very well that they were not present in any of these issues that are in the in indictment, the people that are being protected by the investigating team are very clearly known. I have more than enough evidence to prove that this thing is much more than just an average people that are working at, 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 at an institution called G4S that just decided on one day to release me. It's highly impossible for them to do that without political power, with other high office involved in this issue. I have been out in South Africa, living my life for a year. I have not violated any human, but I am treated with the utmost, even in the legal fraternity, Your Honor. It's very difficult for me to appoint an attorney. Attorney would cancel brief on the base that say, I don't want to be associated with Tabo Bester because the media will attack me. I've had five counsels who told me that, that I would love to be in your case, but I'll be in the background because I cannot be seen in front, because you are Tabo Bester, the media will destroy me and the, the state will never give me any work. Is that anyhow how I should be treated when I am standing in trial, Your Honor? Is that equal to any other person that is standing in trial? My last point, Your Honor, is that under this section... Is, this is your third last point. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make it a, 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 This is the last point. Yes. Okay. Section 2... Section 200 and, uh, 277 that was cancelled by the Constitutional Court as a death sentence. Your Honor, I say this as a broken man, and I say this wholeheartedly. It tears me apart to see these people in this court, knowing very well that they're suffering for something that they know, know nothing about. I request that the public, if they are so convinced, and if the prosecution is so convinced that I am the waste of these people's lives, that this section be enforced on a panel or on a, on a petition. That under special, un, under the previous Act of Correctional Services, I mean of, of Criminal Pros, uh, Prosecution, Act 126 of, 90, 90, of 92, that a death sentence be given as a petition, that the public signs a petition and I be given a death sentence. And immediately I will agree to it. So we end this matter. I came here with 80 cars. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning. I've been having chains on my feet. My feet are ice at this point. I can barely feel my toes. This is not the way I want to proceed, Your Honor. If it means that this court can accept the petition and the public can sign it, and I can be put to rest, and we can put all this, because I am at peace. I know what I've done. I know what I've not done. I am not perfect. But one thing I know for a fact, that none of these things would exist if there was no backhand of political watchdogs that control the situation. <clears throat> and I, I humbly ask you, and I'm sorry to have the outburst, but it's a lot for me to take. Really, it's, it's, it's too much because I feel that it's unfair. It is unfair to be treated and to, to struggle to appoint an attorney. You find the best attorney in, 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 in whatever, or the best advocate, but they will refuse brief. It's not a, ma a matter of funds, it's a matter of association. And it's not fair, it means that I'm not equal in this court. And if I'm not equal in this court, then it's a waste of time to come to court. Then you might as well just sentence me and release these people because they know nothing. Are you done? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Bester, it seems to me that uh, what I intimated earlier still uh, remain uh, relevant and that is you must first engage the services of a legal representative. Uh, secondly, with regard to your conditions in prison, it is for that reason that Justice Cameron is there. He's the inspecting judge of prisons. You can uh, lodge a complaint with his office and I can assure you that it, it will be investigated. Uh, when it comes to the documentation, Again, your legal representative can help you to bring a, an access to information application, and you'll get that. Uh, Mr. Mbemvane, who is standing in for Advocate Bester here, uh, can be engaged in order to give you a copy of the docket for you to, to look at what uh, evidence they have against them. I'm not in a position to prescribe to the press, the media, 
uh, or to Mr. Mpemvani on what they should or should not do. Uh, lastly, uh, as to your co-accused, it is the state that brings prosecutions and not the court. The state is of the view, and that is why they are before a court of law, that there is at this stage a prima facie case against them, and that is all that they need. Uh, it is not for me to decide whether they are innocent or guilty. And uh, the death sentence, you say yourself, it has been declared unconstitutional. I have no power to bring it back. Uh, uh, one and two, the whole issue of a petition, uh, uh, that is totally irrelevant. It's not a consideration uh, for present purposes. Uh, so what I suggest is get a legal, a legal representative and let your legal team do the necessary. I think it would be best, as you yourself say, you are a lay person and I don't think that it would be wise for you to want to conduct your own defense. So you informed me that uh, you'll be able to do that within the next seven days. A date has now been arranged, which is the 24th of July, 2024. Uh, should you instruct or engage an attorney, you can give the attorney instructions to bring the necessary application to this court, because I cannot entertain an application, uh, Mr. Pimvani, if I, I don't have the, ah, sorry, Mr. Bester, if I don't have the other side of the case. At this stage, that is what you tell me. I do not know uh, the veracity thereof. It would therefore be proper. If there is a proper application, properly prosecuted, and the commissioner or whoever else you mention has the opportunity to answer, and a court of law can then look at all the relevant facts and circumstances and come to a proper decision.